Welcome to this week's edition of Kakaki Social. I am Chidera Ezudoye. So it's not Rena Obozege today. It's me, Chidera Ezudoye. And we are beginning today's edition with a very interesting story. We have the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, on Sunday commended the Ghana electoral process, highlighting its innovations and political stability as key factors in the smooth conduct of the elections. Now, Ghana's former president, John Mahama, won the country's presidential election held on Saturday, December 7, 2024, after his main opponent, Vice President Mahamudu Buwamia, considered defeat. Now, the INEC chairman who monitored the election and spoke in a short video observed the political stability inherent in Ghana's democracy, noting the consistency of the political party structures and voter loyalty. Now, let's play a very short video of our INEC chairman because netizens are reacting. 2023 elections, you did not do anything and you went to Ghana to show yourself. But let's go to the space of X and see what is going on. But before then, take a look at this video. Well, it has been a very um, interesting election. Uh, we came here as part of the ECOWAS network of electoral commissions with colleagues from Sierra Leone and Liberia, and also with colleagues from the Southern African uh, region. And there is even a gracious concession on the part of uh, the main, can the other candidate of the main party. Uh, so uh, we are grateful that it has gone very well, but the process is still on. The election result has not been officially announced by the Electoral Commission. So we'll go and continuously support our colleagues in the Electoral Commission. But we are very happy with this process and outcome. Are there, are there, are there, things you have observed? there are many things I've observed. Um, the first thing is uh, the political parties. Uh, one of the lessons I think from this election for me is the fact that the main opposition candidate was vice president and president of the Republic of Ghana lost elections on two different occasions is now third time lucky and the candidate of the ruling party has also been in the same party which has been in and out of power for a long time rarely in ghana do you see people moving from one party to another with every general election so that is important it provides stability it also provides their supporters stability so that there are people who support political parties for many many years um, so, whether well, netizens have been reacting to this video of our INEC chairman, so let's go to the space of X and see what is happening there. And Happy Asman says he did what he did and got away with it. That's why he is still embodied. You can't blame him. It's our fault that he messed with a full country and got away with it. Just look how fresh he is now. Proceeds from rigging our elections for APC and Tinubu at work. Mm. Well, the next user, Upwardly Mobile, says at INEC Nigeria chairman did not learn a thing about peaceful conduct of elections without logistic issues or manipulating of results. They went there just to collect fat allowances. Well, I hope he shares some of these allowances with netizens because Vivian Ellis says he still assure or he will still assure and reassure Nigerians that care to know that he will still rig the 2027 election to the highest bidder simple. It's not me that said it, so she's the one. Well, Preferred Ola says, there was no technical glitch during Ghana presidential election. No drag it or snatch it or run away with it. No ballot box snatching. No voter intimidation or harassment. Results was not as na announced in the middle of the night. No manipulation of results. Well, I don't know if I'll say kudos to um, our INEC chairman or if I need to say kudos tonight to Ghana elections and all their body, but then, we are still stuck in Ghana elections where our Nigerian president, that's Bola Ahmed Tunubu, has congratulated Ghana's president-elect, that's John Drama Mahami, while commending Ghanaians for upholding the tenets of democracy. While our dear president, Bola Tunubu, hoped that Mahami's accession to power for the second time would further bring stability to the economic community of West Africa states, that's ECOWAS, of which our president is the chairman. So let's go to the space of X and see what netizens are saying about our president and Ghana's president-elect. Well, rule of law, Nigeria says, the president said to Nigerians to grab it and run with it. Then, the president said to Ghanaians to freely elect their leaders, mocking Nigerians, obviously. 
Ebito is saying, we hope we will allow or they will allow Nigerians to vote for their elected leaders without any interference. Only God knows what is going through the mind of Mahama. <laughs> well, a very interesting story where the ongoing clash between the human rights lawyer, Dele Faratini, and the senior advocate of Nigeria, the son Afe, that's Afe Babalola has rekindled attention on past allegations of judicial manipulation involving Babalola's chambers. Now, this controversy brings to four, a 2004 diplomatic cable from the United States Embassy in Abuja, released by, the WikiLeaks, by WikiLeaks, which alleged that Afe Babalola and co played a role in influence of election tribunal ruling in Plateau State in favor of the former president, Olushe Gunabasanjo, because of his political interest. Now, according to this leaked cable, the funds were purportedly funded through Babalola's chambers, enabling the PDP to overturn judgments that initially nullified Darile's victory in 2003's Plateau State elections. Now, this decision was seen as a critical win for Basanjo's administration at the time, given the political tension in Plateau and its wider implications of control of Nigeria's Middle Belt region. This tussle has been going on for a while, and netizens have been going agog on social media, what is going on? But then the truth only says, I will never say wow, even without any detailed evidence. Every sensible Nigerian knows that everything written in that book is nothing but the truth. Nigerian judges are more corrupt than these notorious politicians. He cashed out in billions and went ahead to establish a private university, and some people will be using him as a prayer point. That's nothing mocking in Nigeria anymore. Hmm. And Obron Gabia is saying 30 million naira as at 2004. I think we need to do this mathematics. As at 20, 2004, 30 million naira. Now, please help me tell me what 30 million naira will look like in 2024 because there should be a law that compels people with questionable wealth to explain the source. Well, the next user is saying it shows the level of people that's leaders that supported Obi in the last elections. Anyway, Obi does not or does not do different from them, Shah. And we have Mr. Apostolos who says, how did he make so much money that he could gift 10 million euros to King College, that's London. Nigerians need to demand that money to be returned. So I really wish sometimes when these politicians do these things, we would actually question them. But then that is where we call it to end on today's edition. <laughs>